so good afternoon to to all of you we are reassembled once again to this two days international webinar on covid-19 a global pandemic in this uh, technical session which is the second technical session for the today so in this technical session we have the two distinguished speaker one is dr anirban s assistant professor of department of geology bardwan university and our have a second uh, speaker dr rajdeep banerji he is also doing post doctoral research in university of wisconsin macedon usa so first we will call dr anirban s assistant professor of department of geology bardwan university to present his uh, thoughts and uh, regarding this covid 19 and he have did his phd from czech republic followed by couple of post doctoral research including iscb kolkata and jdsi kolkata his main research interest includes morphology ecology and life cycle studies of aquatic fishes particularly in marine fishes so now i'll request dr anirban s please present your presentation Dr. Anil Banash, is it audible to you? Anil Man sir, listen to me. Yes, I am listening to you. Dr. Anil Banash, is it online? Yes, I am listening to you. Yes, I am listening to you. Yes, I am listening to you. Yes, I am listening to you.
अनिर्वाण सर यू आर नॉट ऑडिबल पार्टिसिपेंट्स आर रिक्वेस्टेड टू प्लीज वेट आवर रिसोर्स पर्सन इज फेसिंग सम नेटवर्क इश्यू सो प्लीज वेट Okay, due to some technical problem, we failed to start at at a good time. So we'll take a little bit time because connection on internet for our speaker got some problem. As due to this pandemic and uh, situation, internet becomes the very most popular tools for the communication, studying, and working. So it got a lot of pressure. So we'll take a little bit time to get recovered. We'll come soon. Please be with us. हेलो सर अनिर्वाण सर यस आई एम ऑडिबल नाउ यस सर यू आर ऑडिबल नाउ ओके
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So is the is the screen is visible? Yes, sir. Visible. Clearly visible. Okay. 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 Thank you. Sir. Thank you for the patience and thanks all, especially the organizing committee for giving me the opportunity to present here. So very good afternoon to all and thanks for your patience because some technical problem. I'm a little bit late. Sorry for that. So today I'm just going to tell you in very nutshell about the genosis and the wildlife and the current scenario because we are going through a pandemic situation. So in this situation, how the genosis can play a crucial role or maybe an eye opener for us in near future. We all knew the term genosis, but most of the time I found that uh, students, especially students, are always uh, identify maybe genosis is just a disease coming from another vertebrate to human, but it is not. It is vice versa. From human to the wild animal, it also can transmit. So the one which is the normal one, like the disease coming to human from wild animal in natural way is called anthropogenosis whereas the vice versa that means from human to the wild animal it's called zoo anthroponensis so both are actually problematic uh, but we are thinking about the human perspective that means uh, anthropogenosis so we will concentrate on that anthropogenosis topic only. So every organism in evolution is adapting, right? Uh, from the very uh, classical New Darwinian uh, theory, we know that, that environmental stress is giving the selection pressure and there are several variations happened and this organism this, uh, they are changing into a new one, like the normal process of evolution. Whereas in case of parasites, there is another thing going on. Environmental space is uh, giving pressure to both of them, like the parasite and the host too. That means an organism or an animal where the parasite lives. That means a parasite is also getting stress and the host is also getting stress. So they both are actually co-evaluate at the same time. That means co-evolution is going on. How it is happened? Like we are concentrating the mid one. That means red queen hypothesis, which is uh, involved in the parasitic evolution form. So how it is? The top came from uh, the famous Allen, I mean Alice, Alice in Wonderland. We all know about the story of Lewis Carroll. So it comes from that story that Alice is uh, trying to catch Red Queen and Red Queen is running over. So the same thing happened with uh, this parasite and host, like host and parasite both try to cope each other. Like when we are getting some parasite, our body system try to avoid them. Whereas parasite is also evolving to cope with that changes in the host body. That means both of them are running like in a treadmill. That both of them are running uh, through the evolutionary process, but both of them are static in the same way. Like when we are doing the treadmill, we are feeling that we are running, but actually we're not running, we're just standing there. So it's happened here also, like this red called queen hypothesis that both the organism are evolved parallelly. That's why both of them are static. So somehow they are maintaining a balance. How it is like the host resistance and the parasite virulence. So if the balance is just, uh, if it is little bit disbalanced in, if it is going to host side, then what happened that if the host is little bit higher, that means if it is getting up, if it is healthy or if it is getting some uh, evolution that can protect them for the parasite from the parasite that means their number is decreasing so their health is decreasing whereas 
if the parasite is getting evolution where they are more virulent then they are going up that means host is decreasing i mean host fitness is decreasing in nature parasite doesn't kill a host they like to stay in the host if they are killing a host that means they are no more parasite but they are called parasitoid so in normal ecosystem in normal system a par parasite and host are always maintaining this balance but what happened that we human are interfering the nature right so we are somehow poking our nose in between this balance system there are lots of things happening like uh, we are i mean we the humans are responsible for global warming we are causing the global warming we are cutting the trees we are destroying the natures by this way we are somehow disbalancing the nature's balance so in this way we are somehow changing the balance of the ecosystem i'm just giving some examples so maybe it will be clear for you that how this zoonosis is quite quite problematic for us one of the classic example is coming from one tapeworm called diphylobotriasis or diphylobotrium is the organism that cause diphylobotriasis so diphylobotrium is one tapeworm i think uh, we heard this term tapeworm or in bengal it is fita clemi from uh, hs onwards or maybe from atomic onwards so this is actually the life cycle of uh, this diphylobotrium tapeworm so how it is in general fish eating mammals in the northern hemisphere uh, especially these arctic bears polar bears arctic fox fish are eating the fish they are harboring or they are the primary host of this uh, tapeworm and from their fecal matter the eggs are coming into the water and they are embryonated they are coming into the second indian uh, first intermediate host that is a copepod and from there from this copepod they are going to the fish especially the salmon the pacific salmon and from pacific salmon they are emerging as a pleurosaurid in their muscle and from fish eating mammals they are passing into the fish eating mammal and in fish eating mammal they are mature, getting mature and the cycle is going on so human coming here when they are replacing the bear or any other mammals who are eating raw fish now the question comes that how human is interfering here right human in general is not eating raw fish but yes there are some special delicacy a special food where we are using raw fish and problem starts from there so here is one map that indicate this diphylobotrium latum cases the confirmed molecular diagnostic diphylobotrium latum cases where we can see that all the cases these black dots are found in northern hemisphere right in the northern side we can find them because i told that these arctic mammals are actually the primary host of this uh, tapeworm that's why their infections are there so these cases that's human case hello is it audible is yes, it audible sir. to everyone Yes, sir. It is audible, but I just have a request to you. Sorry for the interruption, sir. Yeah, sir, yeah. can you please uh, go to the next uh, next slide? I mean, uh, we are on the first slide itself. The slides are not being, uh, you know, uh, changed. It's it's not at all moving. No, the slides are not being changed. We are yet at the first slide. Okay. okay. Is it changed now? Ah, uh, no, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. So now so it can changed. Can you see the second slide now? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, 
the animations are coming there or not i uh, know sir sir can you please uh, yes sir, we are on the second slide as of now so what sir it is a still picture it is not a yes but the anthropos anthropogenesis or jew anthroponomsis is visible yes, or not sir. yes sir yes sir yes sir yes it's visible yes sir it's visible sir clearly okay. visible so it was my second slide i already talked about this one i think now it is clear to you yes sir yes sir definitely yes, sir. the slide is moved now or not no sir okay yes sir now it is moving sir. yes sir. so it is it was the third slide where i talked about the red queen hypothesis so is it visible now yes sir it's clearly visible to us okay yes so yes, so this is the phenomenon that i was talking about the red queen hypothesis that uh, the middle one is the red queen hypothesis that i told and the first one is the and this is the reality that i was talking about so the picture is visible the alice and the queen pardon sir what you have said uh, alice and the queen is it visible yes sir it's visible okay. yes sir yes sir so after that i was talking about this uh, balance thing like the host resistance and parasite virulence is it visible in this sir okay so i was talking about this slide and after that i talked about i mean i told that i will go to some case studies so it is the fourth slide so now it is visible the world map yes sir yeah it is okay so we are here now so can uh, i think you all can see that in the northern hemisphere there are several black dots right yes sir yes okay. sir okay so these solid circles are designating that there are this diphyllobothrium latum cases okay so diphyllobothrium latum cases are there and as i told earlier that this diphyllobothrium latum at the probably i missed one slide okay uh, probably i think you didn't see this one right uh, it was not visible prior right so i was talking about this diphyllobothrium life cycle first that arctic mammals they are the harboring the tapeworm and from them the egg passes into the water and from there the copepods engulfing the egg and the embryo hatching there and then from these uh, copepods it's going to the pacific salmon and the prosarcoid stage are uh, integrated into the salmon and from salmon it is going to the fish eating mammals so this is the normal life cycle of diphyllobothrium latum whereas human comes here because they sometimes eat raw fish for some special meal some special meal some special del delicacy that's why they are getting infected by eating the raw fish so it is the scenario that how human is infecting themselves to diphyllobothrium latum and after that i'm showing this uh, world map is it visible now this world map yes sir it's yes, completely sir. visible okay so in this world map you can find these black dots that means these are the clear cases 
or molecularly identified cases of Diphylobotrium infection in human in late 80s. So this map is originated in late 80s, where you can find these uh, dominant uh, Diphylobotrium latum cases. The Diphylobotriosis cases are just happened in the northern hemisphere. There is no case, I mean, no confirmed case in the southern hemisphere. Just it is confined in the northern hemisphere. Why? Because the Arctic mammals are present there. That's why that, that case is happening there because they are the uh, main uh, primary host of these, uh, or the definitive host the, of the Diphylobatrium latum. So from them, human, get, human getting infection by eating the raw fishes. So nothing happened in the southern hemisphere. The picture changed after 90s. I mean, after 90s or 2000, the picture is totally changing. And this is a picture from 2015. You can see the shift happened and there are lots of new cases emerged from the southern hemisphere. Especially uh, the places like Japan, in India also, the other countries, it is just uh, huge. I mean, it is almost all over the world now this diphylobotriasis can happen. So it is be becoming a emerging parasites in the world. So what's happened and how this genosis happened to the southern hemisphere? That is the main point that how human is involved in this case. So I'm going to the next slide. Please let me know that if it is visible or not. It is visible? Sir, so it's visible, sir. OK. Yes, sir. So here are some milestones. that. So your, so your voice is breaking. I mean, some of it can be heard and the rest cannot be heard. I mean, your voice is breaking during the conversation. OK. It's not in my hand, unfortunately. It's not in my hand, maybe due to this network problem. So in my part, it's fully clear, sir. I don't know about others. OK, OK, OK. So here you can see that uh, here is a milestone that how diphylobotriosis happened. So you can find that it is quite old parasite and it is known to human uh, kind for a long time. And as I mentioned, sorry, as I mentioned that uh, the Pacific salmon is one second intermediate host of this parasite. That Pacific Salmon is quite important and it plays a crucial role to transmit this parasite to human. Mm -hmm. So what happened here, Pacific Salmon, you can see the nice fillet of the Pacific Salmon. And there are some of these plerosarcoid larvae which are engulfed into the muscle of this nice fillet and this whole situation like this shifting from or rather spreading from northern hemisphere to southern hemisphere this disease just happened for a special dish called sushi i think lots of you know the na name sushi it is a famous japanese food so it's happened due sir, to fish, sir, fish oil rice filling, no sir. Sorry. Sir, uh, sushi is some fishes with rice filling, no sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's 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 a uh, it's wrapped with the fish, uh, raw fish, and inside it the uh, cooked rice and some meals. I mean meats like the seafoods are there, they're stuffed there, but the outer circle or the envelope is actually raw fish and it is uh, the meat or the fillet of this pacific salmon that's why it spread it because after 2000 the pacific salmon was transported to japan for produ production of more and more fillet for this uh, sushi so what happened that the infected 
Pacific salmon were taken to Japan or in China or other part of uh, West Asia, West Asia or East, East Asia or Southern South, Southeast Asia. And through these infected fish, this disease is also incorporated to human. So by this way, just for one food, the whole world is now getting infected with this particular parasite. Uh, you can see this uh, small uh, plerosarcoid larvae, they are actually infecting the human. Uh, I did my, as, 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 a, as uh, just before the talk, uh, during the introduction period, uh, you heard that I did my PhD in Czech Republic. So in my lab, actually, uh, some people are working on this uh, particular Diphilobotrium latum. And you know that Czech, Czech Republic is uh, totally encircled by land. So there is no sea. There is uh, no chance of getting Pacific salmon because it is a land uh, land engulfed country, or I would say that it is uh, surrounded by all land. So there they are doing some experiments that if if somebody get infection of this Typhilobotrium latum, and is it possible that uh, they can spread this disease to a country? like Czech Republic, where Pacific Salmon is not available. And surprisingly, they found, yes, it is possible. Like one of our director, he uh, himself act as a volunteer, and he took uh, this plerosarcoid, and later this tapeworm uh, infected its uh, intestine, and uh, periodically they are collecting the excreta, or the potty of uh, our director, and they try to uh, mix uh, the pond with that uh, egg of this uh, tapeworm. And they finally found that these eggs can infect the local fish, especially the other salmon-like fish, which are present in the river system or in the pond system of that country. So you can imagine like if it is uh, coming to a new country, it can infect the other fish host. And by this way, if we are eating the raw fish, we can get infection into easily. So this happened with Typhilobotrium latum. And now almost all over the world, it is found. So there are several such food, there are several such food or several such uh, dishes where raw fish is used all over the world. And by this way, we are getting exposure to several diseases which can transmit it through raw fish. Here are some uh, name of the fishes like sashimi, sushi, or some other fishes, uh, raw fish uh, delicacy which are eaten in the European countries or in Arctic region where salmon can be used. Here are uh, a list of some parasites which are restricted to some particular geographical distribution but due to uh, globalization it's now getting all over the or spreading all over the world. So the threat of this case is, is it visible? This slide is visible to everyone? Yes, sir. So the threat is uh, globalization or the popularization of uncooked raw fish related food. There are several dishes, even in India, even in Kolkata, you will find the sushi parlor. I don't know that which type of fish they are using there. If they are using raw fish, there is high possibility that we may get infection through that raw fish. The main point is uninspected inspe import of Pacific salmon and other fishes from other countries, especially from 
the European countries. When those they are exported to any other country without inspection, there is the high probability that they may carry some parasite inside them and raw fish or raw eating of that fish can be creating some problem. And obviously, popularity of tourism. We Bengalis are love to uh, trotting around the world like we are defining our, ourselves as a globe trotter. So we are visiting several countries and we are taking the taste of various foods. So by this way, unknowingly, we are harboring other parasites in, into our body because these parasites are getting inside the body, right? So we can see that if it is inside our body or not. And that is the problem. If it is an ectoparasite, it's easily, easily visible that, OK, we have some tick in our hand or we have some mosquito in our hand or we have some other external parasite in our hand. But if it is an endoparasite, it's really, really problematic because we don't know that what parasite we are actually harbor. And another problem is global climate change. That's why. Uh, as I mentioned before, that uh, physical stress are there, like the environmental stresses are there. So the parasite, which is now exposed to another, another uh, climate or another world, they will try to find a dread to try to find some way to survive. So dread try to find some new host. So by this way, they are actually spreading all over the world. Here are some symptoms. Uh, I don't know that if it is visible or not. Uh, next slide. So I try again. So here are some uh, symptoms of these internal parasite or internal helminths that can infect us through raw fish. So you can see that there is no such concrete uh, symptom that can be distinguished them that, OK, I have some parasite inside my body. They are quite common. Like if you have diarrhea, you will never ever uh, think that you may infect it uh, like Diphylobotrium, right? So it's very hard uh, to detect them, uh, to find them. Because if you are going to doctor, they will give you some pills for just normal pills for some anti-diarrhea tablet or some and they, they will find maybe you will have amoebiosis. That's why you are getting uh, diarrhea because is, is it visible to is it visible to all and am I audible to everyone? Yes, sir. You are completely yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible to everyone. So this is the problem because the local doctors they are also not aware that this foreign particles or the foreign disease can happen in India also. So these problems are actually we are facing or we are going to face soon if we are not aware by this time. Like what happened in case of COVID, if we were aware before, maybe we can prevent that. But due to this unawareness creating this nuisance. So we have to aware ourselves or we have to know this problem so we can handle the situation. So this is one thing. So the normal protection or the prevention is how we can prevent ourselves, or we, how we can protect ourselves from this uh, type of uh, zoonotic disease is the pu public awareness. We have to let the public know that, OK, diphylobotriosis now can happen in India. So the people will aware about the name and aware of the situation. Definitely, we have to avoid the raw fish. If any fish is looking, looks questionable, we have to avoid them. Food handlers, we have to educate to those food handlers that what are the problems if, if you are not cook the fish well. So, if we are eating any food that is cooked properly, there is no such problem or we can easily prevent this kind of situation. So always try to eat a well cooked food. Don't try any undercooked or raw food. 
that's the main thing we have to remember and the frozen thing we have to if we want to use the frozen fish fillet or something we have to freeze them or frost frost them properly so by this way we can avoid this transmission so this is one aspect of zoonosis that how zoonosis can be dangerous now i'm just uh, briefly going to another part that is zoonosis and wildlife i'm sharing two pictures here or rather three pictures so is it visible to everyone the pictures of three images yes sir yes okay. sir they look nice right the first one is describing that due to this unlock period or rather this due, due to this lockdown period uh people understand what is the caging means and they are trying to uh, release the birds from a cage and there are some white pelicans here they are engulfing some fish right these pictures and this news is very much i would say that uh, enthusiastic news to all of us yes it is uh, very very nice news and very nice pictures but if we are looking carefully the birds are there all are exotic bird right none of these birds are actually native to india similarly that fish that fish is also not native in india it is a pleco fish that is usually found in uh, south, uh, south south america and popular in aquarium culture simultaneously this bothri bird they are also very popular in pet market where exotic birds are uh, used as pet because in indian law we can't cage any native bird so we are always if we are having a uh, like to pet some bird then obviously they should be some exotic pet bird so what actually they did here they released a uh, exotic and exotic fish in indian system they are and this guy is also releasing some exotic uh, bird in indian system so what happened to them usually they can't uh, survive it's true these birds can't survive because they are habituated with the cage cage condition they are bred in the cage condition so they will die very shortly because uh, of the attack of some predatory uh, predatory bird or maybe some predatory mammals whatever they may may not survive but if any of them are getting survived the problem will starts from there simultaneously the fish also this fish are uh, growing very fast and they are actually uh, i would say destroying the natural condition of our river system the native fish they are actually can't compete with these uh, fishes with this aquarium fishes so if somebody is uh, doing or having aquarium and suddenly found okay my crocodile fish is getting larger than my fish tank okay let's release them into the water by this way we are harming our environment so firstly we are damaging the native fishes we are releasing some unwanted exotic uh, animals into the system so by this way how we are hampering the nature i can uh, tell you here in the next slide i'm just giving a life cycle of one parasite that is fluke or liver fluke i think you heard that. is it visible now no no sir okay yes sir the is slide it? is visible sir okay so here i am uh, talking about a typical trematode life cycle just giving one example trematode you all know about the trematode lung fluke liver fluke right so all these flukes are trematodes and usually they have Uh, two host life cycle one is vertebrate host that means the adult one and the another one the intermediate is snail where they will have this sporocyst and radial stage and this is usually happened in water and this is in vertebrate gut so they need a transition 
from water to land so what happened here it is the usual life cycle so they have to go from water to land through some other animal so there are the sarcaria and metasarcaria states which are making a bridge like they need some bridge animal to go to the final host so here i am showing another slides where you can see that there are so many variations can be happened in normal trematode life cycle as i showed before like this metasarcaria stage is usually like a stagnant stage so when this metasarcaria stage is actually happened they are attached to aquatic vegetations so when uh, aquatic uh, i mean one vertebrate who are eating the aquatic vegetations they can get infected with that parasite but there are some parasites which are having their final host as a carnivorous animal so ha what happened to them they will not come to the water to eat the aquatic vegetation to get infected themselves so the parasite have to find another host like one second intermediate host or paratenic host where they can transmit themselves and that paras I and mean, that animal can eat uh, grass or aquatic vegetation and another animal or the final animal should eat that intermediate animal so final animal if it is carnivore and intermediate animal is herbivore then obviously there is a chance of getting infection to the carnivore the final animal by this parasite so they will choose to find a way to go to that final host so by this way they are changing their life cycle in various way now just imagine our released animal maybe will come as a bridge between this host switching so unknowingly we are somehow incorporating in our balance system i showed previously that our ecosystem is balanced through this host predator relationship or host parasite relationship and somehow we are introducing another something to that in between and that particular species that exotic species may act as a bridge between that disease so in this way maybe which par a parasite which can be found in one animal can jump to another animal by using this released animals as a bridge so in this way we can produce a zoonosis which is maybe not favorable to us so we have to educate people not to release this kind of exotic animals exotic birds exotic anything into the wild or into the native river system so frequently by this way we are disturbing the nature and maybe we will in near future having trouble by eruption of some other disease maybe the covid is i hope the covid will be over soon maybe another disease will come with another name and we create such kind of pandemic so be cautious of this kind of situation and educate people as much as possible the releasing of bird is very good thing but not the exotic one you can release the native bird like the munias there are still lots of illegal pet trading trading is going on so you can release the native birds not the exotic bird you can release the native fish not the exotic fish or the aquarium fish this can make disaster in the nature so that's all uh with that i'm just thanking or acknowledging some of our collaborators like uh, our supervisor or my supervisor thomas and my uh, colleague from czech republic who are giving me some unpublished data for this presentation and there are some selected reference which i can use here in this presentation and after all thanks all of you for your kind attention thank you so much sir, for this session
Thank you so much. Anil Manson? Yes, yes, yes. Is there yes, any sir. question? I can't see any question in the chat box, though. Can you hear me? Participants are requested to hear, sir. You are audible, sir. Participants are requested to kindly raise your question. If you have any questions, still Dr. Anivan S is available for a couple of questions. OK, I, I got one question that uh, uh, it, it is uh, asking about that. Is it only fish can bear the pathogens? Which kinds of food we have to avoid? Uh, no, not only fish. There are others uh, stuff like, as I mentioned, that uh, aquatic vegetations, uh, fruits, they can also uh, infect us, uh, these pathogens, because most of the, these pathogens are coming through oral contract, oral contamination, like it is uh, using the oral route. So next question was that which kinds of food we have to avoid? We must uh, avoid the unhygienic food first and the raw food. Like we have to wash the fruit properly. It's uh, better, like we always have our kitchen, this uh, we are commonly called like the baking soda that is always available in the kitchen. So if we are mixing that uh, baking soda a little bit, not the uh, baking powder, but the baking soda, uh, in Bengali we are calling like khawar soda. So if we are mixing that uh, baking soda a little bit with the water and we are uh, deposit the vegetables, the foods, that's that we have to eat raw uh, for for few hours. That can easily disinfect uh, these eggs or any other intermediate stage that can be uh, getting inside our body. So by this way, we can avoid uh, this kind of exposure easily. And always we have to eat uh, the raw, raw, I mean, we have to eat the fish or meat or any kind of animal product, uh, well cooked one. We should avoid uh, the undercooked or uncooked uh, animal uh, food, uh, animal meat or animal uh, tissue or anything. Okay, anybody, if you have any questions, uh... We'll provide the email ID and WhatsApp number of Dr. Anibhan S. You can further contact. With this, uh, 
डॉक्टर अनिल बनास असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जियोलॉजी बर्धमान यूनिवर्सिटी फॉर इज वंडरफुल लेक्चर बिकॉज वी आर लेट बी लेट सो विल थैंक्स नाउ आई विल रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर राजदीप बनर्जी और नेक्स्ट स्पीकर इज काइंडली डूइंग पोस्ट डॉक्टरल रिसर्च इन विजडन मेडिसन University of Western Medicine, USA. He did his MSc from Presidency College, PhD in Boston Institute, and now he is doing the postdoctoral research in USA. So, Dr. Rajdeep Banerji will present his research topics and experience with us. So, with that very short introduction, I will call up Dr. Rajdeep Banerji for his presentation. Dr. Banerji. Thank you. uh can you see my slides no sir no sir not visible only present now sir uh, is it now visible no sir it is not visible to us uh the presentation is not yet started sir I think first you should click on sir present now then it will be yeah, I clicked on present now it's just showing me my uh tab and not my screen uh Can you now see? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is fast. Yes, sir. Can you see the uh, my? Yes, sir. It's visible now. Sir. Is that visible? Yes, sir. Is is uh, is it clear? Is it uh, large enough to see? Yes, okay. sir. It's large uh, enough. Okay. So, uh, sir, if you make this a full screen, then it will be also be visible for us. Okay. If I make it full screen, then I can't see your comments. So, but I will go ahead. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Sir. Okay, sir. Then continue. Uh, um, but it's okay i can do it so feel free to stop me uh, so thank you uh, everyone for giving me the opportunity to talk about corona virus infection uh, my name is rajdeep banerji i am a postdoc at university of wisconsin which is located in madison uh, i study mostly urinary tract infection and in by no means is an expert in the covid-19 infections but i do have some basic understanding of the infection and today i am going to talk about the molecular mechanism of the covid-19 infections so why is it called covid-19 it's an abbreviation of the word corona virus disease so corona virus and disease mix up the word covid and since it originated in 2019 it's called covid-19 sometimes it's also referred to as a corona virus because of its similarity with the corona that we see during solar eclipse now the association of the corona virus with the humans is not new there are at least seven species or i should say strain of corona virus uh, that infects humans of which there are four like oc43 hku1 229e and nl63 actually cause common cold and have been present with the humans for a long time however recently in the last 20 years there are three strains of corona virus which caused havoc in human population leading to a lot of death the first outbreak of corona virus occurred in 2002 2003 and it caused severe acute respiratory syndrome also called as sars the second outbreak happened in 2008 2009 and it happened in middle east and so it's named as middle east respiratory syndrome or mars and finally is the covid-19 outbreak okay 
now if, if from the previous uh, talk you guys have learned about zoonosis now this covid-19 is also a classic example of zoonosis or the coronavirus where as you can see sars the civet or small carnivores acted as a hub or an intermediate host to pass on this pathogen or the bacteria to human beings whereas in case of mars it's the dromedary camels from which the human got the infections the total number of deaths from sars is 774 whereas from mars it's 866 however if you see the global map of corona virus or the covid cases the number goes in hundreds of thousands and it's across all over the globe so and india is particularly affected as you can see so is america it's possible a uh, place of origin is in china and there have been various speculations about how this virus entered into the human population some say that it came through the bats by direct uh, contact some say it's through bats through pangolin and finally into the human beings i won't go into details of how it gave, uh, got into the human population however i will give you an introduction about the viruses about the virus and how it infects the human what is the mechanism so as you can see this is a very simplified diagram of covid 19 or the corona virus uh, the, the virus has this spike like protein on the surfaces so let us first look into how the, what are the different elements of this virus coming from the first the spike protein the spike protein as the name suggests looks like a spike and has two domains the s1 domain is a globular domain which helps in its recognition to the host whereas it has a stalk like domain or the s2 domain which helps in the fusion now apart from the spike protein there is also another protein on its membrane called as the m protein as has been shown over here now this defines the viral membrane and also plays as a central organizer for virus assembly inside the cells and there is also e protein which is another membrane protein which is required for viral assembly shown by green in this slide now if we go little bit deeper into the virus structure just below this proteins uh, is a layer of lipids which is stolen from the host now this layer is extremely important because this layer this lipid layer gets damaged if it is if we wash our hands with soap or alcohol based sanitizer that is why all the healthcare workers and doctors always are referring to are, are always suggesting to wash our hands with soap or alcohol based sanitizer because that will dissolve this membrane as a result of which the virus will die now if uh, we go little deep we will find that there is a layer of protein just under the lipid layer which is called as a capsid this protein actually helps to protect the genetic material or the rna of this virus and finally coming to the genetic material the genetic material of covid-19 virus is a single stranded rna which is shown by this gray structure and around wrapped around this gray structure or the rna is a red structure which is called as the n protein or the nucleocapsid which helps to protect the rna from the host immune response now with this basic understanding of the virus structure uh do you guys uh, can you guys see the slides and hear me yes sir it's clearly visible and audible yes sir okay so uh, so with this uh information uh by this time you guys must have known that the route of transmission is through the respiratory pathway or if somebody sneezes it produces lot of air droplets and that air droplet if you inhale actually can cause infection and the route is probably through the nasal cavity nasopharynx oral cavity and it travels all the way down into your lungs now how does the bacteria enter into the lungs or the body 
so we have to understand that there are various possible theories which uh, explains how the virus actually get into in our system one is a direct cell entry one other is an endocytosis mediated pathway but before going into the details of this let we have to understand another system which is the renin angiotensin aldosterone system so what happens if there is a decreased blood flow in our body probably due to a uh, a diastolic pressure getting down or there is some local infection or injury or the blood vessels getting dilated that is sensed by the kidney and it produces an hormone called as renin now this hormone renin acts on a precursor which is called angiotensinogen and converts it into angiotensin 1 this angiotensin 1 is converted to angiotensin 2 by an enzyme called as ace which is secreted from the lungs now this enzyme is extremely important for covid 19 what angiotensin does angiotensin 2 does is it does two things firstly it constricts the blood vessel so that the blood pressure gets increased whereas it activates the adrenal gland as a result of which it produces aldosterone and that can also produce similar effect through kidney so it's little bit an s protein as i have mentioned uh in the, it's present in the lungs can exist in two forms it can be present in the circular or globular form or it can be cleaved by an enzyme called as shedes which is shown by blue over here and resulting in formation of this truncated s protein s2 protein now whatever that got cleaved from this structure goes and binds to angiotensin 2 and thereby cleaving of portion and forming angiotensin 1 7 it's too much of information and you guys can get confused that is why i made a summary slide so what happens in an unhealthy adult or somebody with a chronic infection s2 protein is present in a globular form that is a full form and angiotensin 2 is the predominant form so it causes angiotensin 2 raises the blood pressure and it also helps in chronic illness whereas in a case of a healthy adult the s2 protein is mostly present in the truncated version and angiotensin 17 is the predominant form of the protein which lowers blood pressure now there has been some studies which show that the corona virus which is shown over here with this huge blob with spike protein interacts with this s2 protein in unhealthy adult with a globular form whereas in the truncated version the s protein cannot interact and as a result the virus cannot get entry into the body that is why there is a statement you guys must have heard in the news that almost everybody will get infected with the virus but not everybody will get affected because of the differences in the receptors as well as immune response now let us look a little bit deeper into how it happens as you can see this virus gets entry with the virus shown in green gets entry into the cell now low in the lower half is the mechanism it's too complicated and i won't go into the details of this process but what happens is that when this um, whatever is shown in the gray is the cell membrane of human beings whereas whatever is shown in the gray in the lower half is actually the cell membrane of the or the membrane of the virus now the virus has this protein s1 and it binds with the s protein of the humans and what s does is that it cleaves the s1 domain exposing the s2 domain if you guys can remember back in my slides the s1 protein sorry uh the s1 protein what is it okay okay so the s uh, s1 and s2 protein the s1 was a globular domain it got cleaved off exposing the s2 domain which helps in the fusion 
and as a result of which the the virus can get entry into the cell now what happens after the virus gets entry into the cell the virus must replicate and form its own protein so if you look into the genome of the covid-19 it's a huge size genome about 30 kilo bases of single stranded plus sense rna by plus sense i mean that the virus can enter into the cell and can get directly translated by ribosome to form its protein however the prokaryotes and eukaryotes have a quite different system for translation in case of bacteria and viruses bacteria in particularly the mrna is polycystronic that means a single mrna can produce many different types of protein however in case of humans or other eukaryotes it's a monocystronic that means one mrna to one protein now how a virus which has a single mrna that needs to produce about 27 proteins from a single mrna from using the host machinery in order to do that what the virus does it has three different tricks i will come to one of these tricks one by one the first trick is that when the ribosome binds the in this portion which is shown in the gray which encodes for non structural protein or the proteins which are involved in replication whereas one which are shown in blue are the structural proteins and accessory proteins that means from here the spike protein the m protein the n protein that i mentioned will be synthesized so when the ribosome binds here it produces a single fused protein which is also called as a polyprotein so each protein does not have a definite start and a stop codon the entire thing has a start codon at the front and a stop codon at the end so when it is when it gets translated it forms a fused protein which is then cleaved by one of the viral enzymes to form the separate subunits this is uh, very interesting uh, because uh, now it can hack the host machinery and can produce lot of its protein however um, i as i mentioned there is no stop codon but there is a very interesting thing that people found out that there is indeed a stop codon at this region which is shown by the red box over here so when the ribosome is synthesizing it encounters this stop codon however the stop codon is a very slippery sequence so what is a slippery sequence so when the ribosome encounters that sequence it has it can either recognize it as a stop codon or it can go all the way and synthesize the mrna so, most interestingly in order the sequence just adjacent to this sequence slippery stop sequence is a pseudo not like rna structure so if the stop codon is here it will form a pseudo not which is shown on the right hand side like here this pseudo not is an extremely stable structure and as a result what happens is the ribosome hits this structure and gets stalled or paused so ribosome ta ei jaga ta te pause kore jay ar pause kore kothay it pauses over this slippery sequence and ei je slippery stop codon er jaga ta te o stop korlo it then shifts one base ekta base o piche jay and you guys have read in molecular biology classes that the codon happens in triplet so tinte tinte kore triplet kore ekta kore amino acid so if it shifts one base then it won't be in frame with the stop codon and as a result the entire thing can get translated eta khub important ekta virus er uh, property because then it can fine tune the protein synthesis jokhon dorkar hobe tokhon o total rna ta toiri korbe but or jodi mone hoy je na ami ei tukui toiri korbo so it will stall the rna ribosome and as a result of which o puro rna ta toiri korbe kinba it will recognize the stop codon and will stop over here 
তো এইটাকে বলে রাইবোজোমাল ফ্রেম শিফটিং the second part so that was for this two blue genes what about this red and pink genes the orange and the red genes age 5 prime age portion which encodes for the structural and accessory proteins a protein gulo jone ekta second strategy na ba second trick na coronavirus jeta ke bole je production of subgenomic mrnas nam ta onek boro subgenomic kintu basically what it means is এই আর এন এ গুলো যেটা তৈরি হবে দিজ আর স্মলার দেন দ্য হিউজ আর এন এ অর দ্য জিনো আর আরো একটা ইন্টারেস্টিং পয়েন্ট এখানে দেখতে হবে ইজ এভরি আর এন এ হ্যাজ আ ফাইভ প্রাইম লিডার সিকোয়েন্স অ্যাট ইটস ফাইভ প্রাইম টার্মিনাস আর এই লিডার সিকোয়েন্স দিস লিডার সিকোয়েন্স ইজ অলসো প্রেজেন্ট ইন দ্য ফাইভ প্রাইম টার্মিনাস অফ দ্য জিনো তো ভাইরাসটা কি করে আর এন এ পলিমারিস বাইন্স and produces this mrna and in such a fashion that there will be always a gene at the 5 prime terminus so if, i mean jodi ekto details e boli for example say s protein s protein theke ekhane rna toiri holo emon bhabe jate or gene 2 ta thakbe 5 prime end e arekta mrna toiri korbe je tar gene 3 thakbe 5 prime end e second আরো একটা আর এন এ তৈরি করবে যার জিন ফোর থাকবে ফাইভ প্রাইম এন্ড এন্ড সো ফোর্থ সো দ্যাট ওয়েন দ্য রাইবোজম বাইন্স এন্ড ট্রান্সলেট ইট উইল ওনলি প্রডিউস দ্য প্রোটিন টু আর বাকি প্রোটিন গুলো করবে না কারণ এখানে একটা স্টপ কোডন আছে ইজ ইট ক্লিয়ার টু এভরিবডি হ্যালো সো so yes, so a, uh, the next question is how do, yeah how, how does this sequence the leader sequence get attached to the five prime end so it are jone khub ekta interesting concept ache je when the ribosome is moving towards this direction it encounters a sequence within the rna a rna tar moddhe ekta sequence ache at the three prime end which is called as the transcriptional regulatory sequence or trs সেই টিআরএস টা যখন রাইবোজম এনকাউন্টার করে ইট মুভস অল দ্য ওয়ে ব্যাক টু দ্য বিগিনিং অফ দ্য আর এন এ অ্যান্ড দেয়ার বাই ইট ক্যান ফর্ম দ্য লিডার সিকোয়েন্স আমি একটু ডিটেলসে বলি তাহলে তো আমাদের ক্লিয়ার হবে সো সাপোজ এট দিস ইজ দ্য লার্জ জিনোম অর দ্য আর এন এ ওয়ার দ্য লিডার সিকোয়েন্স ইজ প্রেজেন্ট অ্যাট দ্য ফাইভ ফ্রাইম টার্মিনাস এখান থেকে রাইবোজম বাইন করে ফাইভ ফ্রাইম টু থ্রি প্রাইম আর এন এ তৈরি করছে সো দিস ইজ দ্য RNA which is shown by the uh, red red structure and as you can see is as as RNA ta barche so it is producing more and more RNA uh, uh, sorry amino acids so it's producing more and more amino acids so jokhon ei sequence ta encounter korlo RNA te the ribosome ta jump korlo ar jump kore chole gelo kothay at the beginning of this sequence so আর এখানে গিয়ে ও এই ফাইভ প্রাইম লিডার সিকোয়েন্সটাকে ট্রান্সলেট করলো অ্যান্ড দেন অ্যাজ আ রেজাল্ট অফ উইচ বিভিন্ন সাইজের এম আর এন এ তৈরি করলো বাট অল অফ দেম হ্যাভ আ লিডার সিকোয়েন্স অ্যাট ইটস ফাইভ প্রাইম টার্মিনাস এই লিডার সিকোয়েন্স ইজ ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট দিস ইজ ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট ফর দিস ভাইরাস আর একটা ইম্পর্টেন্ট থার্ড ট্রিক যেটা কোভিড নাইনটিনের ক্ষেত্রে খুব ইউনিক ইজ ইট হ্যাজ আ প্রুফ রিডিং অ্যাক্টিভিটি so rna viruses mostly do not have proofreading activity in their rna polymerase so there will be lots of error but since covid 19 has such a huge genome it needs to have some degree of proofreading and this was a paradigm shift where a paper was published who have recognized a je nsp14 bole je rna polymerase er sub unit ta ache it can actually correct by proofreading i means it can correct the দ্য ইন ইন কারেকশনস ইন ট্রান্সক্রিপশন যখন ট্রান্সক্রিপশন হয় তখন যাতে এরোনাস নিউক্লিওটাইডস না ঢুকে যায় সো দ্যাট ক্যান বি প্রিভেন্টেড বাই দিস থিং আচ্ছা সেকেন্ডলি সেকেন্ড কথা হচ্ছে এই অ্যাপ্লিকেশন হোয়াট ডাজ দিস টেক প্লেস সো যখন ভাইরাসটা সেলের মধ্যে ঢোকে ইট দেন ফর্মস দিস ভেসিক্যাল লাইক স্ট্রাকচার হুইচ ইজ শোন ওভার হিয়ার দিস ভেসিক্যালস হ্যাভ অ্যান আউটার মেমব্রেন হুইচ ইজ কন্টিগুয়াস মিনিং ইট ইজ all combined together and there is a hollow cavity inside it where the virus produces its rna and protein 
but does not form the virus packaging the virus er assembly ta ekhane hoy na only the viruses rna and mrna are produced over here egulo ke rtc o bole tumra khub pore jodi tumra dekho tale tumra ei pore ta prochur pabe rtc it's called as replication transcription complex so the scientists are khub interested chilo je what are the different kinds of protein which are present in the rtc or ei complex guler modhe kon dhoroner protein so ekta technique ache jeta ke bole proximity labeling which helps to identify which protein interacts with other protein thik ache so shei ta use kore dekha geche je je gulo red e rakha ache those proteins are highly enriched in those cavities e gulo mostly structural protein mane or transcriptional and replication machinery however interestingly one of the protein was not present jeta hocche jeta naam hocche nsp1 nsp1 is a very important factor tar karon uh, is it audible okay. yes sir audible okay what nsp does is nsp1 does is that o host je immune response ache seta ke cleave kore dite pare तो किलोमीटर and then this mrna and proteins get translated by golgi gic and finally they arrive in the endoplasmic reticulum golgi complex where the viral assembly takes place ekhane ge assembly ta holo and as a result total virus particle ta packaging holo tar por ota exocytosis kore baire beriye gelo through calcium mediated pathway लेट है the titer of virus in the blood gets a lot and you get sick and you can transmit the virus ar ami finally ei kotha ta bolbo je ekta kotha khub tumra shune thakbe sob jaygay flattening the curve flattening the curve sob shomoy khobore bole what does it mean flattening the curve to ekhane duto graph ache let us concentrate on the left line er duto section ache ekta ke bola hoy red section ekta ke bola hoy green section ग्रीन सेक्शन इज कत कैपासिटी आज हस्पिटल जो जन भर्ती करते तो जो खूब उट मान जो लोके सोशल डिस्टेंस मेनटेन डोट उ मास्क जो हैंड सैनिटाइजेशन ना कि नम्बर अफ एक्टिव केसेस उल इनक्रीज एंड एंड द ग्रीन इट उल माच ओवर दिस ग्रीन रिजन मिटिगेट करते प्रपार नर्मस डाक्तरा लाइक डू अः सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग मास्क हैंड सैनिटाइज करो द नम्बर अफ केसेस उल स्लोलि स्प्रेड ओवर टाइम खूब तीन ब्रो करना तर फले फ्लैट हो जाए फ्लैटिंग कार्व Also at the same time, inadequate migration jodi hoy jodi amader jodi eta ke thik thak control na kora jay, ta hole eta resurgence hobe. Ar tumi jodi prothomey eta ke onekta flatten kore dite paro, ta hole resurgence hoar chance ta onekta kome thake. So ami just eta hi bolbo je there are amader university theo ekhane hoyche there are many trials going on with uh, the different kinds of drugs. One of the trial drugs is the remdesivir. शेष करबिड नाइन कैक्सिन 
uh, it's there in our system. It will be there all over. So uh, just follow all the social guidelines. Uh, regularly wash your hands with soap and water or alcohol based sanitizer. Uh, keep a social distance. And uh, follow and wear mask at all times. And I'm, I can now have questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. If anybody have any questions, we have uh, time to take at least two, three questions. I have a question. Can humans uh, become infected with novel coronaviruses? of animal source it's a very interesting question uh, actually ekta study kore dekha geche je ei je amra charte ba satta jeta strain ache coronaviruses which infects the human beings ta charao there are about 5000 coronaviruses that are present in bats so and there can be an pandemic at any point again uh, so it are could be possible je like for example, SARS, MARS, by COVID-19, they all came from uh, from animals. So, it uh, is Okay, does I have a question? Does COVID-19 virus integrate uh, human cells by injecting its RNA, or does it by uh, endocytosis? So, due to possibility, So, there are two possibilities. There are no clear-cut example nahi. Mostly uh, endocytosis er khetre, uh, chances tonic beshi rather than uh, RNA injection. How can we, uh, uh, sir? Please tell us about COVID 19 viruses. COVID 19 virus is from the vaccine, from the bolte gale, akuno of the sherakum kono trial, and there are five different types of vaccine jugulo phase one a ache. Sheta bolte kela onik lomba ekta presentation hoye jabe maybe some other day. Kintu mostly uh, there are different stages of, uh, of uh, mane variation hoye onik gulo stages thake jar diye jete hoye ekta trial er jonne. So the the fastest humans have actually formed a vaccine jeta safe was five years. 1980 the ekta vaccine toiri kora hoye chilo. Je vaccine ka trial na kore manushke diye da hoye chilo. Engvong tar folle pray 400 people lost their life. To shayjo ne vaccine tarar tarir jera kum Russia kore chhe. Je onik vaccine toiri kore chhere diche jar total number of people they tested was 70, uh, which uh, which shouldn't be the case. You have to go through phase one, phase two, and phase three, and then. Uh, so it's at least another year. So Ami um, PPT ta pathiye dite parbo ekjon boleche tar PPT ami PPT ta tomader sarader o diye dite pari to tumra sarader thekeo niye nite paro feel free uh, acha ekjon bolche uh, um, how do we eradicate it eradication er ek type uh, basic principle ache je uh, if we have to develop a vaccine jotokkhon uh, vaccine hocche we cannot eradicate it shei jonnei amader ekhon social norms gulo mene thaka khubi important ebong tomader jara all the students tader ke ami bishesh kore urge korbo dekho there is two thing one is a social mixing and another is a physical distancing tumra socially active hotei paro within the social platform you guys can meet but try to avoid physical contact mane joto ta paro kom bondhuder sathe dekha koro i know it's tough uh, is there anything known about COVID-19 transmission from pregnant woman to fetus? Amar jana nahi. Ami akhono jani na. Eta khub debatable ekta issue. So ami kono conclusive kono answer eta dite parbo na. Fetus the placental barrier ke o cross kore jete pare ki na. Sheta ni onik debate ache. So shudrang.
what is the mechanism behind the decrease in oxygen level in blood onek kichu mechanism thakte pare the jetar jonno oxygen level blood e kom hote pare jerokom ami ekta bollam je tomar ei covid 19 er khetre ekta jinish hoy lungs er moddhe jeta alveolar te giye onek beshi amount of fluid accumulate korte pare so the gaseous exchange rates decreases so tar phole ki hoy the amount of oxygen um, that the hemoglobin receives is lot less so tar jonno oxygen level kom hote pare or and eta khub important ekta question or asymptomatic patients less contagious na ekdom i na tomar asymptomatic pre symptomatic ni ami kono comment korbo na there is still doubts but asymptomatic people are equally contagious mm. can corona virus disease spread through sewage সুয়েজ দিয়ে এটা খুব ইন্টারেস্টিং একটা কোয়েশ্চেন আমি জানি না আমার জানা নেই সুয়েজ দিয়ে এটা পাঠা যায় কিনা তার কারণ হচ্ছে টেকনিক্যালি যেতে পারে বাট আই এম নট শিওর দ্য ওনলি নোন পাথওয়ে ইজ থ্রু রেসপিরেটরি হুইচ অর্গানস রিমেন এফেক্টেড আফটার پیشنটস রিকভার ফ্রম এটা নিয়ে তো অনেক 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 রকমের ঘাতিকভাবে <laughs> no since it's just an year old it's very difficult to comment on how long term these effects are to amader at least 5 bochhor hoyto wait korte hobe eta bolbar jonno je corona virus er koto ta long term effect hote pare it's too early to comment okay sorry to interrupt uh, there will be obviously lot of question in this debatable issue mm-hmm. and let's uh, jointly thanks uh, rajdeep banerji for his nice presentation and uh, we will provide the email id and whatsapp number of uh, dr banerji if any already have uh, other questions about debates or discussions you can please directly contact with him so with this we from all our organizing committee we deeply thanks to dr banerji in this situation also he given us the suitable time to discuss all his finding thoughts and current research thank you dr banerji Thank, thank you so much thank you so much it was wonderful talking to all of you thank you so much thank you okay with this uh, this is the end of our second technical session our third and fourth technical session will start on tomorrow that means 5th september exactly at 11 o'clock so 11 to 1 o'clock there will be two lecture by two distinguished speaker and then we will have a break and again we will meet at Four o'clock. We'll have again two specific and very distinguished speaker with us. So, including these two technical session for tomorrow, we'll have total four distinguished speaker. So, I request all our delegates, all our participants, to please log in again on tomorrow, exactly ten minutes before the schedule starting at eleven. So, thank you for the joining with us. to all the speakers all the participants thank you very much have a nice time thank you so much sir for arranging this type of sessions